Yo, 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 what up, though? It's your boy, Shree Coder Nate, and we back at it again with another video. So in this video, we're talking about the development process. Yes, the development process. So with the development process, what is that all about? Let's, let's, let's uh, rewind. Typically, when people come to me and they say, Nate, can you teach me how to code? I'd be like, yeah, I can teach you how to code, but... In, my, in the back of my mind, I'm like, they don't really understand that coding is just a really general term, that there is specific avenues that you can go down when you're coding. And so the way that I say that without saying that is, uh, is there an application in your life that you were always that you always wanted to build like you said that you said that if you ever had the skills to design and code is there an application that you would want to build and so then that gets people to start thinking and then if they can't really find an idea i say okay well then about the what about the uh, applications that you use now what are some things that you hate about those applications like just you wish you could change let's let's focus on that so if you if you can't think of ideas I bet. Focus on fixing a social media. Cool. Or a video streaming platform. Or e-commerce platform. Something. I bet. So, but what if you are cool with coming up with ideas? Then bet, bet, bet. You can start with ideas. You just, you just that idea person. You creative. You like, man, if I just had that skill with coding, if I just knew how to build this stuff, though, I could just take the heck off. I don't know why I said heck. You know, I just... I'm trying to be myself on the channel. It's fighting a lot of, you know, you gotta not cuss and yada yada. I'm like, I'm being myself to street coders. Let's get it. Okay, so anyway, we're getting back on topic. Let's just cut to the chase. The steps in the development process. What is the development process? So say that you have an idea that you wanna create. Well, most people, when they start, when they know how to code, they say, okay, what code do I need to grab? And I'm like, bro, don't think about the code. Stop thinking about the code. First, think about the idea. What are you trying to create? What are you trying to put out there? You're trying to build something for another human to use. Let's think this idea through. Hence the ideation stage. We had an ideation stage ideation stage. In the ideation stage, this is where you're bringing the idea out your brain. We see You see it in your brain, but we, people, we don't see it out here. So what you need to do is bring it out here for us to see it. So in this ideation stage, you're bringing it out here. You're planning, uh, you're planning out all of the different things that you want to offer, the services that you want to offer, uh, the colors, and all of those different things about the service. Actually, not even the colors. We're just talking about the service. This is really just business logic. Like, what is the idea that you want to do? Let's see. For an example, on this web, on this uh, channel, we're going to create a Instagram scraper. So let's use that for the example as we go through these seven steps. Bet. So the Instagram scraper, ideation stage. What do I want to create the Instagram scraper for? Well, I know a lot of toxic people in my life, so I know some people would love an Instagram scraper in order to, you know, track somebody without logging into their own Instagram account. So what would be the stages of creating? Okay, first, okay, well, yes, what would be the stages of creating an application to follow somebody and get some data up on them on their Instagram account without even logging into your account? What would be a stage? What would be the stages to do that? So that's the idea, right? We got to bring that idea out of our head. We got to make it creative. We got to create that idea. We got to take that, what we just thought, that thought, and we got to bring it to life. This is the point of coding. So we take that idea and we start bringing it to life. How do we bring it to life? We start to describing it. Okay, so Instagram scraper, what do I want to be able to do? I want to be able to go to somebody's page. All right, so I need to be able to log on to Instagram and go to a page, uh, whoever I search, whoever name I put in, I need to be able to search. 
Therefore, I need an uh, input box in order to put in a, a, a search item, a, a person's username, right? I need an input box. Cool. So now you're starting to think, okay, so I need this input box, uh, a search item uh, to be able to search for a person. Okay, now that you search the person and you got their data, what, what data do you need out of that? What data do you want to make sense out of? You just got all this data back after you searched them. What do you want out of that? What do you want to make sense out of that? Okay, so if you stalk in or somebody, well, let's see, um, likes. Let's see how many likes he's getting on his last page or something, you know? I don't know. Or comments. Or who's all commenting on his page. Okay, cool, cool, cool. So that's what we do. So we go grab all the data, and when the data come back, we go, we, all we want is the number of likes and the people who liked it and the amount of comments and the people who commented in their comments. Cool. All right, so we're starting to ideate this through. I think I just made a word up. I don't really care, though. So let's go. So now... We, we got the idea, so we, 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 we get the data. But now that we got the data, we need to, we need to, we just got raw data. And humans, we don't really like raw data, it just looks ugly to us. So, I mean, computers, they don't really care. And programmers like me, man, I use the terminal, and that's just a black box. Like, when you start up your computer, you use, like, Mac OS or Windows 10. I use like that black box called the terminal and you just write commands in it and it just got black and white stuff and you can do literally everything that you do on a regular computer in the terminal. But y'all regular people don't like that stuff. So what we do is we create this thing called a GUI, a graphical user interface, sorry, a graphical user interface. And what a graphical user interface is, is like, it's what you think is a website, is what you think is an application. It's the front end, it's the what the user interacts with. Is when you go to facebook.com and you see all the colors and the pictures and whatnot, that's the graphical user interface. And so what somebody does is th they got this back end that creates all this data and pulling that, like I just described before, and then they create this front end and they connect it to the back end so that you don't have to see that all that stuff is going on and you create the front end on that. So the front end now, so now what we just did was we just described the ideation. We just described all the services and pretty much what is called the business logic. That's what we call it at Microsoft is the business logic. So we just got the business logic done. Now we need a, a nice little design for the users to interact with so that it's not too complicated for them. That it, like just seeing a whole bunch of data will complicate you, right? So we need a nice little design. So this is when we come into step number two, the design stage. So now that we at the design stage, we, we start taking this idea and we go get some assets. What are assets? These are images, these are, these are text, these are videos. Because when you go to a website, all you really see on a website, go to a website, when I say this, after, after I say this, go to a website, check it out. All you see for real, for real is text, images, and, and videos at the bare bones is text images and videos now there may be colors and there may be some styling some animations but at the end of the day there's text images and videos type shit so what you need in your assets is text images and videos that you want to show on your website that's going to really talk about what you need to talk about so all we doing is making an instagram scraper so what we're going to do is probably get a background image to make it look kind of dope you know dope or we can do a uh, gradient it's whatever but we're gonna do a background image cool so we're gonna get a background image for our assets then what we need also is the text we need the text that's gonna show up so it's probably gonna say welcome to instagram scraper uh search somebody so let's just write that down somewhere keep that in what we call a content management system it's content that show up on your website it doesn't really change if anybody go to your website they'll see the same content so this is called a content, and we could put this somewhere called a content management system. So that's what we're going to do. All right, bet. So we got some content, and all our content is going to go there. Our content is our assets. And so our images are also going to go there, and our videos are going to go there too. So bet. We get all our images and our videos. We design out our website with the colors and the images. Um, I'm going to show you all how to do all of this stuff. Bet. So now we got the design down. It is time to get Funky, funky, funky. All right, for real though. Number three, initialize project repo. What does that mean? So now that you have your idea out, you have your design out, it is time to get nasty with the code. You need to initialize your project repos. And I have an S there because 
you need multiple repos. Now, why do I say you need multiple repos? Because one, you need one for your local development. Then two, you need one for yo, you need one for uh, remote pushing the code to like a, a cloud. So if you working with somebody, y'all all could work together. That makes sense, right? Like GitHub. But, and then three, when you push into like a remote server that's gonna serve your application to the whole wide world, or a remote server that's like a testing environment. So you need to set up uh, all these repositories. So that's number three. Once you set that up, and what I mean by setting it up is mean like set them up, connect your local to all of them, and then put like in your local files, create a like a back end server and just set that basic server up that can just uh, serve a what up though once you uh, go to localhost slash or localhost um, colon 3000 slash home or without home or just slash and it'll just say what up though or hello world in the olden days but it's the modern day so we say what up though. But if you can get an application like that push that code to your remote servers have it being served out to the world on maybe just a, a BS app, a BS domain like Heroku, bet. Now we can reach your application anywhere on our local host, on our development server, and on our production server. Now that we have all of that together, we can start working on our back end services. We can start working on our back end services. So, what are our back end services? These are like our APIs. You know, when you go to Facebook and you click in the like button, and you don't really see it, but it just turned like blue or red, whatever color it is. It just turned that color. You don't really see what's going on in the back end, but behind the scenes is they're sending off this thing called a get request to their back end services. And their back end services is saving uh, Nate just like such and such video or such and such posts. So now I like they post in the database and Facebook. That's how that works. So we need to be able to set those little back-end services up that's working in the background where the users don't understand and it's not going to really stop the users from interacting with the user interface, you feel me? So that's what we need to set up in the back-end. That's what the back-end is for. And it's, it's, it's for tapping in with the database. It's for crunching like big data and running complicated processes and all of that. The front-end is more just for making the user like do, making, showing the application to the user, making the data look nice, and then showing animations and whatnot. It doesn't do all the hard data processing like Siri does and whatnot. Okay, so now that we got four done, we moving on to step five. What's step five say? Create UI to connect to the back end. Okay, so now we got our back end services working all right. We can connect to them using like something like Postman, which help you test your code and you test your services. We gonna get into that though, but we, we, we can connect to it, but our users, they don't want to just see some raw JSON come back. They want to see a nice little user interface because to them, an application is the user interface. So we need to tap in and create this user interface. Well, boom, bada bam, number two, we created the design. So now what we go do is code up that design. We go code up the front end design for this idea. For all these services we just created, we code up a front end design and then we connect different button clicks to all these services in the back end. Bet. Now that we just connected these services in the back end, it is time to test the code. Honestly, you should be testing the code all the way through. That's called unit testing. Each little unit of the code, each little component of the code, you need to make sure that it's doing what you expect it to be doing. But at this stage, this is I forgot the, uh, the word, but it's the full on where you test it everything together. You combine everything together and it's the, the whole co combination test. Comment the name in the, uh, in the comments if you know what I'm talking about. But it's, this is that testing that when we bring the front end and the back end, we want to make sure that when we click this button with this username that his data come up and it does the right thing and we test all of the weird cases that users would do like putting in weird characters and just trying weird stuff that is not supposed to happen as a security person this is this is testing so we're gonna get into that as well now that we know that our code is good we can push it out to the world we can say we say that all right we just built this dope uh we built some dope services we got this dope idea we built some dope services to go with it um built a dope user interface to interface with it and we made sure it was secure all the way through 
Now we can make sure, now we can push it out so users around the world can use it. That's called the deployment process. And that's the last step. And so I'm gonna teach y'all. These are, these are all the steps that we go through. And actually I didn't talk about the deployment process. Let me get a little bit into that. So in the deployment process, you're putting it out on these things called servers. These things called servers. So people are gonna come and they're gonna say, let's say for me, I got a website called natebaker.me. Uh, and I, uh, when I say natebaker.me inside the browser, what happens is my computer uh, makes a request to another computer called a server. And that server, what it does is, what my computer is saying is, uh, what it's requesting is for the index.html file. The index file is the home page of any, any pretty much website out here, unless somebody just changed it up to be fancy. But most times, when you go to a website, when you write that name in a title, what it's doing is requesting an index.html file for that domain, google.com, natebaker.me. That domain is requesting that index.me file or index.html file for that domain and then what happens is the server goes and finds that index.html file on its uh, hard drive and then sends it to your computer. And then what your browser does, it shows you the HTML file and then you see the uh, stuff on there. So what we wanna do is go ahead and put our code on one of those servers. That's when somebody say our, when somebody connect to our uh, server, it, it, uh, they serve it. And so that's already going to be handled already in the um, in the setting up the re repo stage, but we revisit it again in the deployment stage just to make sure we connect everything together. So these are these steps. When I create applications, whenever I have an idea, whenever I have a feature to create at Microsoft or a bug to fix, this is the steps that I go through. And so what I'm going to do is now go use React. Um, MongoDB, Node.js, and Express. This is called the MERN stack. I'm going to use these technologies and I'm going to create a bunch of different applications using some dope APIs. And we're going to follow these steps. And we're going to make these applications over and over and over again. And you're going to be able to follow these steps and get this process down. And then you're going to be able to replicate the same exact thing. It's going to be a dope, it, it's, it's going to be dope all around. I'm excited. I hope you guys are too. Let's get it. Let's go. Peace out. Wait a minute. Follow your boy. Subscribe. Share my videos. Who y'all know that's lit like this, that's teaching like this? Come on, y'all. Share my videos and let's get it. We on to the next one. Peace out.